right, guys. This is the video on blocking. So I just finished quilting this. Um, it is one of my designs that I stitched out with the Elevate. And then I went back in and I did all freehand. Stent well, that's a stencil, but I still did ruler work freehand. And some matchstick quilting. And I did a tiny little micro stipple all around it so that it pops up. So um, the reason we block, um, I would never block a bed quilt. There's no need to. It doesn't ever need to hang perfectly flat. Uh, all competition quilts that I do get blocked and most wall hangings that I do get blocked. Because when, and I tried my hardest to make this kind of wonky and it's not too bad. Um, there's one spot right here. So you can see how that, if I push this down, this pops up. And if I push that down, it pops up in the center. It's um, pretty much kind of distortion from the quilting. This is not too bad. It's a little wonky over here, which it doesn't want to focus. So anyway, it, it's just a little, um, if I were to hang it, probably the weight of hanging it would solve half of this because this is not bad at all. But some things are, are real bad. Like you'll get a, a an area that looks like that. It just pops up. So um, that's why we block. So the first step is I trim everything down. Now I have an idea of where I wanted to cut this. And I could cut it first and then try to block it square. But um, most of my things, if you ever notice, go off the edge. Because I don't like to make them. I like to square it up after I block it unless there are straight lines in it. But you'll notice a lot of my things don't have straight lines because it just, it makes my life easier if I can um, just trim it afterward. And that'll make more sense in a minute. So I like to leave an edge because we're gonna have to pull this and pin it. So I leave about a little bit of an edge with my, my fabric and the batting and the backing. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this nice and wet. So we'll do that right now. Okay, so we got it all wet. Um, this is small enough, I did it in the sink. Some things I will soak in the tub. If I'm worried about something bleeding, I will definitely soak it in the tub. Other things I will soak in the washing machine. So I just roll it up in a towel and I walk it down the hall. And there it is, all wet. <laughs> so now I'm gonna start blocking it and I'll have to put the phone down to do that because I need both hands. Okay, so when you're ready to block, I hope you can hear me. And I hope I stay on camera. Um, I like to block with pins. I just use my corsage pins. And I'm just going to start. I kind of go down and in. Oh, I should say, I'm using two-inch foam that I just have covered with like a canvas duck cloth. Um, what works for me. If I were doing a large quilt, I have my boards, my silver boards, and I'll show you some pictures at the end of other quilts that I've blocked. Um, so now I'm gonna pull, and that's why I wanna go down and in. So that the pins are going in, in this direction, and as you're pulling, it doesn't pop out. So I do this, I start in the centers, and I pull them out. Pins are all fallen. Put these over here out of the way. So I'm going to pull this. And normally I would turn the board around, but I'm trying to make it easier for you guys to see. And I slowly, am I still on camera? Am I on camera here? Yes. Okay. So I just pull and pin. And I work my way around. I pull a little out and pull a little down. And it's not a one time around process because as you start pulling it, you'll notice some of the water, water, there's very Jersey for you. Some of the water that's in there will start to kind of ooze up, which is what you want. Cause you want it pulled as taut as possible. 
and this is what helps it to lay flat once it's dry. So normally I would spin the board around and do the other side. But I will just lean across. I'm probably blocking most of the camera with my arm. Sorry about that. But again, this is just so you can see the process. You can try it on something of your own. And you'll see as you pull it and pull it and pull it, it gets very flat and This is another reason why I like that edge. I don't ever have to worry about the pins leaving large holes because I will trim that off after it's dry. And of course, now the pup's gonna talk because I'm talking. And this is a double layer of wool bat in here. So on a normal quilt, if I were blocking it, I'd be leaving this to sit at least three days under a fan. This is kind of small though. This will probably be dry back tomorrow morning. Again, if this were a full-size quilt, you, it, it takes a lot more to pull it. Sorry about the puppy. She's locked up and not happy. <laughs> so anyway, if this were a full-size quilt, you have to really pull it and pull it and pull it and start working it out. This is only 18 inches square. So it's not very hard to pull it. I will share a couple tricks before I'm done about if there were sashings in here or borders that you wanted to keep straight. There's a couple tricks to keeping them straight because I would actually pin them first to ensure that they were straight. There, this is not the only way to block. This is just how I block. Okay. So now I'm gonna run my, see how I'm, I can see that there's play? I hope you guys can see that. Let me bring you over here. So now when I run my hand across this, see how I can see that moving? See, that will not lay flat. So I'm gonna spin this around so I can get a better pull on it like I normally would. Okay. Bear with me. Okay, still on camera. Move me up a little bit. Okay. So now I'm gonna pull these pins out that I just stuck in there. Just in that corner. And I'm gonna pull. Sorry about the styrofoam noise. I know some people are sensitive to that. So remember I told you it was more than one time around. You can see the difference I just got from this corner. So now this corner has to get pulled as well. So now we'll pull 
that forward. So you just continue doing this until there's no more play in the fabric. And if, if this were a large quilt, wall quilt, you know, competition piece, um, I have to be honest with you, your fingers get sore from all this pulling and pinning. It's not actually fun. All right, so I'm happy with that. Bring you over here. It's square enough for me, because remember I told you, we're actually going to trim this up before we're done. One of the other tricks there is, I'll have to put you down and go get them. I should have been more prepared, so hold on. So another little trick is a 45 degree laser. If I had had um, sashings or borders, that, um, you know, inner borders that needed to be lined up, I'm hoping you can see this. There you go. You see that laser? That's how you can um, put the laser down and get your inner sashings lined up. And if you use two of them, let's see if I can do this without blinding the world. You can totally line up anything square within the quilt, pull it and pin it. And I would actually pin, if that were a sashing, I would pin it straight down with a tiny little thin pin. That's what these are for. They're much thinner than the thick ones. Bear with me. See the difference in the size. So a much thinner pin. And I would just put it straight down to hold it still. So that's another little tip there. But um, I like to not do those things because if it's perfectly straight and I'm a little bit off, you'll know it. So that's why these come in handy. Um, I should shut them off. These, I wanna say are like 30 bucks each at um, Home Depot Lowe's. So it's just a 45 degree laser. This is made by Bosch. Okay. So now uh, I will let this sit all pinned flat. I let it sit. Well, I'll come out in the morning. I'm actually going to leave the ceiling fan on all night so it dries. I'll pull it out a little bit and let it sit under the fan at least overnight for something this size. Like I said, a bigger quilt. And I'll actually back up. You can see my disaster studio. A bigger quilt I would put on big boards across both machines and let it sit under the fan or I bring them out to my family room and that's the pictures I'll share at the end. And they just sit out there and nobody's allowed in the room. So I will show you the next step as soon as this is dry. Okay, so this is now dry. Um, I haven't removed the pins yet. I have my big roller and I'm gonna bring you over here for a second. Sorry about that. Sorry about the glare from the lights. So I want my edges to be about an inch away from the motif. So I'm gonna start in this corner. 
Make sure it's all lined up. Make sure I'm through my center point. I'm an inch away over here and an inch away over here. And now I'll mark it. And then I'll flip it around to the other side and do the same thing. So I'm just gonna double check now that I put the camera down. Inch away. Inch away. Still through my centers. And now I will turn it around and do the same from the other side. Um, I like to leave it pinned for this process only because I know it's not moving. It's not actually necessary. You can unpin it and go square it somewhere else if you prefer. I just do it so that it stays and doesn't move around. Okay. So again, the same thing, an inch on both sides. Using the lines I've already done, making sure everything's fairly square. An inch, an inch. So I've just marked it with blue pen and now I will cut it on those lines and I'll put my binding on. So that is my procedure, which is on this something this size, very easy uh, for blocking. So if I have to block something in the future, I will make sure to video it as well because then you'll get an idea on a larger quilt, how much goes into it. So I just trimmed it. And I want you to see the difference, how nice and perfectly flat that is. There's no play anywhere. And until it gets wet, that's how it'll stay. So sometimes with your, your competition pieces, after they travel to some shows and they've been in boxes and they've been, you know, traveling on, on FedEx trucks and UPS trucks and out in the elements, sometimes they do have to get reblocked. So just want you to be aware of that. But that is the easiest way to make your quilt perfectly flat, perfectly square, and to hang beautifully on a wall.